Automation is a critical part of database administration because it reduces the total cost of ownership of the enterprise by allowing repeatable tasks to be carried out with little to no human intervention. Automation in SQL Server is made possible with the SQL Server agent. This is a Microsoft Windows service that executes scheduled administrative tasks which are called jobs in SQL Server. The SQL Server agent is primarily made up of four components. These components define the task to be performed, when to perform the task, and how to report success or failure of the task. The first component is the job component. A job specifies a series of actions that SQL Server Agent performs. Use jobs to define administrative tasks that can be run one or more times and monitored for success or failure. A job can run on a local server or multiple remote servers. You can run jobs in several ways. You can run them according to one or more schedules, in response to one or more alerts, or by executing the SP start job procedure. Each action in a job is a step. For example, a step may consist of running a TSQL, executing an SSIS package, or issuing a command to analysis services server. Each job step are managed as part of a job. These jobs can be scheduled. A schedule specifies when a job runs. More than one job can run the same schedule, and more than one schedule can apply to the same job. A schedule can run whenever the SQL Server agent starts up, whenever the CPU utilization of a computer is at a level you defined as idle. It can run one time, at a specific time and date, or on a recurring schedule. The other component of the SQL Server agent are alerts. An alert is pretty much an automatic response to a specific event. For example, an event can be a job that starts or a system resorts that reach a specific threshold. You can define various conditions under which alerts occurs. An alert can respond to SQL Server events, SQL Server performance conditions, or Microsoft Windows Management Instrumentation, shortened as WMMI. An alert can perform an action such as notify one or more operators, or even run a job. The other component of the SQL Server agent is the operators. An operator defines a contact information for an individual responsible for the maintenance of one or more instances of SQL Server. This could be an individual or even an entire group. One of the most common ways SQL Server can notify operators about alerts are through emails, although the option for pager is available. In order to have access to the SQL Server agent, the user must be a member of the SQL Server Agent user role, SQL Agent reader role, and SQL Agent operator role. If a user does not belong to any of these roles, they can't use the SQL Server Agent. In this demo, you'll be learning how to schedule and automate a task. If you have to do it twice and it can be automated, why not? Automation saves time and reduces human error. So for this demo, I am going to be using the standard edition because the express edition of SQL Server does not support the SQL Server agent. So let's connect. And if when you connect, you're not seeing the SQL Server agent, ensure that you're using SQL Server Management Studio 19. So if I'm supposed to connect to Management Studio 18 and connect to the same database instance, I will not be seeing the SQL Server agent because it seems like it's a bug in the application. We're going to be creating a table within the AdventureWorks database called Time Tracker, and then we're going to create a job called Insert Time to be executed every minute. So what this job is going to do is that it's going to be inserting record in the table every minute. So right-click on Tables, select New. For the column name, we can call it Tracker. We're just going to keep things simple. From the drop-down, select Date Time. Select save to save the table. So I'm going to call it time underscore tracker. Then select OK. Expand tables and you should be seeing the time tracker table. Now right click on the table, select script as, and then select insert to new query window. This will generate a syntax to insert data within the table. So I'm going to replace this with the get date function to get the current date and time. Now let's execute to ensure it's working correctly. So now let's do a select on the table. Now let's execute. Now one record was inserted. So let's copy this statement to create a job. 
expand SQL Server agent, right click on jobs, select new job, specify a name for your job. I'm going to call it insert data. For the category, we can leave it as uncategorized. On steps, you will specify the steps that you want to get executed. So if you have a job where you have multiple steps to be completed, then you can specify each step here. So for example, if we wanted to do a did insert first, then we would have a step one for insert, right? And then step two, step three, so on and so forth. For simplicity, I'm going to just call this step one. For the job type, it can be a TSQL script or it can be a PowerShell, replication merge, replication query reader, replication snapshot, so on and so forth. So we are using TSQL. We are not allowed to change the run as. For the database, expand and select the database you want the job to be executed on. Because if you don't specify the right database, then your job will definitely fail. So in this box, specify the command to be executed. You can hit parse to ensure that the command executes without any errors. Then select OK. On the advanced tab, you can specify what happens on success action. So you can keep the default as go to next step. You could also quit the job and report success or quit the job and report failure. So we're going to keep the default. In the event that the job fails for some reason, you could set the number of retry attempts. So for example, we could say three times and then you can specify the number of interval. So let's say 10 minutes. So the job will retry three times in 10 minute intervals. So on failure action, we'll quit the job and report failure. Click OK. The next step is to set up a schedule which determines when the job gets executed. So select Schedules, select New, and for this step, I will be calling it one minute because I want it to be executed every minute. For the schedule type, it's reoccurring. You could set it to start automatically whenever the SQL Server agent starts. Whenever the CPU becomes idle, or you could set it as a one-time job. Here you have the option to enable the job or you can disable it. So we definitely want it to be enabled. And for the frequency, you can set it to weekly, daily or monthly. So I'm going to set it to daily. So it requires every one day means it will be executed every day. For the daily frequency, we want it to execute every minute. So select occurs every and then change hours to minutes. As you can see, you could set it to even second. For the start and end time, you could specify what time of the day you want the job to start and what time of the day you want it to end. For the duration, you can specify a start date and specify an end date as well. Over, we're going to go with the option of no end date and select OK. For the target, you can only execute on the local server. So select OK to create a job. You can also monitor when the job is running by viewing the job activity monitor. You can double click or right click and view job activity. So you will see the status of the job, status idle, last run, last run outcome unknown because it was never executed, and last run never. So let's refresh, see if it got executed, and now we can see that the last run outcome was succeeded. So let's close this window. Let's execute the select query from the time tracker table. Execute. You can see one record was inserted. Execute again to see if we have some more records in the table. You can also expand jobs. Right click on jobs and view the job history. You'll see the number of runs. And if there was an error, you'll see it shown in this section and you'll see failure here. If we select SQL Server Agent Log, you'll see the list of events that took place for the SQL Server agent. So when it comes down to scheduling your backups, you could use the SQL Server agent to execute the full backups and the differential backups. So the SQL Server agent is a great way to automate processes and reduce human errors.